this disaster is my office craft room filming studio the works this setup needs to change kind of want to get it against that wall but if i do that i lose the ability to like cut fabric on the end of the desk here so i gotta figure it out so that's my goal today is to clean up this desk and maybe move some things around. We'll see what happens. Office rearrange, mission accomplished, right? No. So just when I got started and started to clean off the desk, we ran into a little plumbing issue that took all day to work out. Finally ended up having to call a plumber, actually called two plumbers because the plumber I called, he's like, oh no, that's a clog in the main, and uh, and we don't do that. We'll give you the, we'll, we'll have a guy that we know that does it call you. They came out. They had like a giant weed whacker thing because apparently we have roots in the main drain. I did not know that was a thing that could happen, but there it is. <sighs> so, a very reasonable three hundred dollars later, we have flowing water. We can flush the toilets. But I never got to rearrange my office, so maybe next week. We'll see. Now i got to figure out what I'm going to stitch on tonight. Check in later. Kindred Spirits. It just barely won out against Gwendolyn. But I really want to finish this. I don't know. I, like, I'm not just, like... I don't want to stitch on it anymore kind of thing. It's like, I want to finish it. I want it to be done. I want to be able to say that I have finished a primitive needle. Uh, I want to think about how to frame it or how I want to finish it. That's what I want to do. I just want to get on to the next part of this, I guess. I don't know. I messed up today. I'm still thinking about, I'm still like afraid to flush my toilet because I'm just sure that something terrible is going to happen. <sighs> but we will work through it. So, small little pictures tonight. Another bullseye over here. Then there's two colors, but one of the colors I think only has like eight stitches or something like that, so no big deal. Let's see what we get done. I'll check in. Oh my lord. <laughs> the black is done. The orange has been started. We're on our way. Uh, the orange is going to take longer than I thought because there's a lot of border. There's so much more border than I thought. So I'm thinking maybe one more full night to do the orange in the border and then maybe a short night to do the orange in the stars and to do the green in the cat's eyes. So yeah, I'm thinking this week we could do it if we ignore Gwendolyn. Don't tell her. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. We're back at it. Like it's our job. I was sitting in my office seconds away from buying a Lowry stand. Because I said to myself, wouldn't it be great if I could work on Death by Cross Stitch in here, where I could be comfy, I could watch the TV, I could use, you know, the big old extender bar, stitch like crazy. Wouldn't that be awesome? And I said, yeah, it's $200. I've got a 15% off coupon code that won't apply because it says that I need to be logged in in order to use it. I am logged in. So-and-so, what are you doing to me? Had a similar problem on Etsy the other day. So now I'm starting to assume it's just me. Chrome is apparently being childish. I should try them both again in Firefox later. Why? Why am I going to buy a Lowry stand? Why? I could just put Death by Cross Stitch in the 11 by 17 Q-snaps. And I could sit in here with that and balance it on my knees and be fine. But no, instead I want to buy another $200 piece of apparatus to bring into my house. I can't do this. 
I'm just a crazy person. I don't want to stitch in my office anymore because the office chair is awful. Why don't I just take the money and buy a new office chair? I don't know. <sighs> All right. We're going to pretend for a little while that I'm not completely psychotic. And we'll get some more of this orange done. And we'll see how far I get. Check in later. All the black is done. All the orange is done. There are eight stitches left in green. I am exhausted. I am going to put my feet up, finish my tea, and we will finish this tomorrow. Talk to you later. Right, because what you thought was going to happen with eight stitches left was I was going to put this down and go to bed. It's done! We have a finish! I did my first primitive needle! I'm so happy with it! It came out great! And I can stitch on 40 count! This is so exciting! What do I want to do next? Oh my god, I gotta work on that little witchy. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. I can't start the little witchy now. But... We have a finish. That means I get a new start, right? Right? Here we are. This is my last Wednesday off. I have taken all the time I can take in January. What I haven't taken, I'm going to lose for the year. Oh, well, that's how that goes. Um, but at least I have today. So the plan today is to work on this for a while. I think what I want to do is try to do that stitch with me. I am trying. I just not... I forget to talk because I start counting and then I just go about my business. Um, so we will try to discuss that or try to discuss something. And then maybe... This afternoon after lunch, before I have to go to dinner at my father's, I might move over here and do some of the variegated floss. And for that, I would like to do, you know, the the sped up video. But Kara over at K's Cross Stitch introduced me to Pitch Cart, P-I-T-C-H-K-A-R-T Cross Stitch, who does apparently nothing but time lapse videos. But hers are monumentally sped up. Like, she fits five or six hours worth of stitching into a few minutes. It is faster than I thought you could do. Like, I didn't think it would look like anything if you did it that fast. Um, mostly because when I try to preview these kind of things, why am I just, I should just be stitching and then we can do the whole stitch along thing. Um, all right, where am I? I have a fairly old PC. And so when I go to edit, the playback is kind of choppy. I mean, it gets me there. I managed to get videos out, but it's not fantastic. So when I try to preview the sped up videos, I mean, I'm lucky I'm seeing like every, you know, X number of frames. So I kind of have to guess how that's going to look. But once I get past a certain point of sped up, it almost doesn't show me anything. It just sticks on one frame until it's finished. So I guess I thought it would get muddy if I went too fast. But no. Pitch card has shown me that there are options. So maybe we'll see... There is supposed to be over here, there's going to be two hearts and a crown that I am doing in the variegated. So I thought that would be interesting to see build up with the time lapse. So we will see how that goes later. That's not where that goes. That's where that goes. Um... I'm almost wondering if Death by Cross Stitch is not the piece to be doing this with because I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay. 
it's okay we get it under control so we need to do here um let's talk about <laughs> as you know i have probably filmed three or four of these but i keep descending into a spiral of negativity and madness mostly having to do with facebook and or people on youtube who like to thumbs down videos it's probably not the best source of subject matter for me to get into so i would like to talk about stitching stands because I am like inches away from getting a Lowry. Because I like to stitch in my bedroom, sitting on the bed. But like I could never work on this in there because there's just no place to prop up the frame. Um, any larger project, like if I had the 11 by 17 Q snaps going. It's just a little too unwieldy. Get up in the... Th you know? Seriously. Um, you know, there's no place to balance it well. So I kind of wanted a stand that holds... But it has to hold the frame from the side. You know, so that it sits next to the bed. Or it has to be a lap stand that can sit in front of me. And I know there is an option. Well, here, let me start with this. I never know what I'm gonna be working on. It could be this, it could be something in a Q-snap, it could be something I haven't even started yet. So I don't want to get something that specifically holds scroll frames and then find myself starting a big project on a big Q-snap. So that's why I was thinking what I really wanted, what I actually really still want, is the lap stand that is from, is it Oceanside Woodworks that I got this, this stand from? And this stand is the kind, I will put in a picture, that has the swivel arms so your project just sort of sits on the uh, on the stand. It's not clamped to it. So I could put my scroll bars here. Before I had my scroll bars, I would put my, um, my big Q-snap there. Because I don't really, when I'm sitting in here, I don't need a stand for smaller projects. Because scrunched up in my chair like I am... <laughs> You know, I can balance a regular size Q-snap or a hoop or whatever I need and get in there and, um, you know, go to town. This is something that I have just started doing because I'm just hopping into, uh, I mean, I've always used pin stitches, but I kind of got tired of flipping over to end my thread so what, see, I always go too far, the little, little tail left. Um, so what I've been doing on here lately, or trying to remember to do, is pin stitch to end, and make it like the first leg of my cross, and then loop start from the front. Of course, I don't usually go to the back with this, but whatever. I don't necessarily have... Okay, one should not try to cut things that they can't see, because it will end up being their own finger or something. Come on. Don't be difficult. Just do what I'm asking. Let me cut it off really... This is the worst example of what I'm doing ever in the history of anything. Anyway. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about stands and how I wanted a lap stand or a table stand 
that's built similarly to the one I'm using here that has the adjustable arms so that if I have a Q-snap, if I have scroll rods, whatever I'm working on, it would work. Are we new at separating? This is the thing. I can't talk and work. Here we go. Um, so I can work on whatever I want in the bedroom. And I went to the Etsy store for Oceanside. And it looked like they were like on vacation. I guess they were moving because I emailed the shop owner and he was a sweetheart. He emailed me right back and he was like, oh yeah, you know, they were moving the, uh, the studios and just getting ready to get back up on their feet. And I want to say it might've even been the same day or maybe the day after he actually put the shop back online. So I was very excited. So my feeling was, is I was going to ask for the lap stand or the table stand for Christmas. By the time Christmas rolled around, the stand was gone from the shop and it hasn't come back. So no stand for me, Christmas or otherwise. And away we go. Um, so yeah, bummer. So now I'm left trying to find something similar and I'm just not. What's weird, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just used to having too many choices because I'm an American and that's how things are. I mean, I would think that there would be more than one person making this type of stand. And I understand that the roll of frame people appear to make stands kind of like this or something. What am I doing? Um, they seem a touch expensive, not overpriced because they look like they're solid and they're good and everything I've read about them is good, but probably maybe more than I can pay for a lap stand. Um, but I digress. Get in there. Um. So not finding what I want in the, in the tabletop style. So then I started looking at the Lowry's saying, well, it's a floor stand, which really isn't a drawback because I could use it anywhere I want. You know, it doesn't look like too much of a bear that if I wanted to take it downstairs and stitch someday or something like that, it could be moved. But it's expensive and it doesn't take like forever to come from the UK, but it does have to come from the UK. And again, I, I'm just, it seems like such a simple idea, at least the base portion of it. I mean, it's just a plate with a couple of metal rods. Um... I feel like somebody in the U.S. should be making this by now. And they're not. Not that I can see. So I think and I go back and I put stuff in my cart and I take it out of my cart. And then, you know, I see people using the side clamp with their Q-snap. And it looks like it works. But then I remember somebody saying that there was a corner Q-snap holder that it doesn't look like is on the site either right now or anymore. So I don't know if that means it's not available anymore. I suppose I could ask, but you know, that's not really very much like me. So the Lowry is a maybe. And then I thought to myself, well, maybe I'll just get, you know, like the, uh, the K's creation, maybe not the K's creation, the whatever style lap and table frame that I see people use that just goes in the scroll rods. It just goes in the holes on either end of the scroll rods. 
I think the majority, I want to come up here, um, of the rods that I have, the, the sidebars have the hole in it so I could use it. But that doesn't help me with the Q-snap. So there's so much thinking. And when there's too much thinking involved, that's, you know, that's where I start to fall apart. Speaking of falling apart, come on, there we go. So, does anyone know of a lap stand that can handle both scroll frames and cue snaps? And my largest, what's happened here? No, no, that, that's a no. Um, Oh, it's not stitch with me, it's pick with me. Okay, um. Share your thoughts. Or, you know, just tell me to suck it up and get the Lowry. I mean, it'll be about $200 for what I want delivered. Which is by no means like outrageous or anything like that. All right, now let's do this right. This is one and this is one. That would be the basic stand and it would include the extender arm and the adapter, oh, excuse me, for very large scroll frames because this one that I'm working on here is a 36 inch. And while I say I do not have any intention in the world of ever having to need bigger scroll frames than this, you never know. You never know what I get up to. Guys, come on, get in the, yes. So that's been my dilemma. And actually the thing is, is my father gave me for Christmas $200. So it almost feels like, you know, dad's buying me my new frame. Wouldn't that be nice? Or my new stand. Wouldn't that be nice? It's like it's all working out. But I don't know. Part of me is just like, I will order this thing. It will arrive. And somebody will announce a Massachusetts-based business that I could walk to that has them for $100. You know what I'm saying? Because that's my life. That's how stuff works for me. You know, I gotta say, I don't dislike this uh, chatting while stitching. I just feel like I'm not doing either at my usual speed. Which maybe just means I have to get better at this. But we'll see. Am I on the right thing now? Andrea, just do it. Stop doubting yourself. So what else is going on? Let's see. It's 19 degrees out, which is delightful. Except it's 147 degrees up here in my office. And at the risk of giving you more information than you need, I'm not wearing a sweatshirt that I can just take off. I didn't bother to put a t-shirt underneath. So. 
So maybe we'll just lose a little weight. We'll just sweat it out here. That's not gross at all. I may also have a sneeze coming. Do you hate it when you can't? There we go. <sighs> Don't you hate it when you can't get the actual word out? All right, I have to mark my pattern or else I'm going to forget what I'm doing here. Let's see. We have gone all the way across here. And we went all the way down to here and here and here right. I have to order some new uh, highlighters these are all getting dry and crunchy and I like the clicky ones even though I find that the time that the highlighter has a tendency to fly out of my hand is when I'm clicking it to use it and that's when it's at its most dangerous. I also feel like I don't have any tension on this. I am just coming apart right now. My rods are not very tensiony. My frame is getting wobbly, or my frame stand, you know what I'm talking about. My stand is getting wobbly. Ah, and I went the wrong way. That's all right. There's no rules. There's no rules in cross stitching. See, this is what happens as I stop talking. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Nothing. Nothing else is going on. This is my day. Ack. Um, I get up. I go to work. I do everything I can to get out even five minutes early because it has just become so mind-numbingly boring and not even boring I just there's all these new people and I'm all for doing new things but we need to do them for a reason and the reason can't just be well because I'm new and therefore we need to do new things whether they work or not whether you already did them Two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, everything old is new again. Now, I hate, I shouldn't say I hate. Hate is a strong word, and it's not something that should be, you know, it should be used for something better than Brussels sprouts and Mondays. If you hate something, you better be prepared. Hate is a complete lack of basic human compassion for something. It's kind of hardcore. So I loathe when people come in and they act as though, like, what have you been doing for the past 10 years that you've been doing your job? I have this great idea. We're going to do this. And you look at them and you say, well, fantastic, but we did that because we're not idiots and we know what we're doing. 
The reason we're not doing that now is because it doesn't work. Or it didn't work. So maybe step one when you're going into something is saying, have you tried this before? And if the answer is yes, do you have the information on how it was tried and what the outcome is? Because maybe something went wrong in the execution. Or maybe we have access to stuff we didn't have access to before and the test might be different. Or you may come to find out that you don't have all the best fancy new ideas that we did that and it failed. All right, let's mark this again. I really do like this pattern, like in all the ways, but I almost compulsively have to keep up on marking the pattern or else there's too many iterations and you just get lost as to where you are and how far you have to go I will travel this thing straight down into Connecticut if I'm allowed to I need to keep track I will also say if anybody chooses to get this pattern take it to your local whatever your office your Kinko's your UPS store and get that thing blown up. Get it blown up big. Because one, it's really hard to see the back stitching in a lot of places. And two, it just makes it easier to kind of block off big areas and say, okay, I'm going to do this whole damn thing right now. And I don't know. I find it easier. All right. Let's see. So this one we can go all the way across. But we should do two down just to get that picked up. I like kind of planning my my route. I do not tend to carry my thread more than two stitches. I won't say it never happens, but I try to avoid it. Sometimes I go a little further out of my way than I should to avoid it, but. And it's not even really like a quest to keep the back of my, that's not the right one. Oh, I split the thread. It's all going to go wrong. Okay. Um. Wait, that's the hole. That's the hole. It's not a matter of trying to keep the back straight or clean or neat or anything or to keep threads from showing and stuff. I just, I don't know. I kind of think of it as a challenge. I've been known on smaller pieces to kind of, you know, run the thread under and around you know, if I'm trying to get up here, I'll run it through here to pop out over there. And so it's not like loose on the back. But I am not under the illusion that the back reflects on the front. I mean, unless you've got big honking knots and things, but that's only an issue if you're going to frame it flat. Otherwise... Do what you're going to do. Stitch. There aren't rules. Tape your fabric if it makes you happy. Jeez. Tape it. Staple it. I don't care what you do to your fabric. It's your fabric. You paid for it. If you're asking for advice, like, hey, I usually tape my fabric and there's all this goo on it. What do I do about it? Everybody in the world can jump in with suggestions. But if nobody asked you what to do about taping fabric, shut up. Yes, I am digressing. 
right into the thing that I said I wasn't going to do. Facebook. Nothing good happens on Facebook. Except for all the fun. I'm going to shut this off for now. I'm going to put on some floss tube, finish, uh, well, not finish this, but, you know, keep going on this. And I will be back after lunch to do some variegated floss, and we'll see if we can't do that as a time lapse and make it awesome. Oh, go away. I got to go deal with this. I will talk to y'all later. Bye. So I finished recording my little stitch along. And I turned on the Stash Queen's most recent videos. And isn't she exactly addressing the things I was talking about with the heart drops? And no, these are not, I won't say they're not meant to be put outside like the rocks are. Um, but she used, as an example, very clearly, you know, put it in your library book when you return it and things like that. So, I think this can be done right. I think it can probably even be done with plastic canvas and not be, you know, um, an environmental issue. I was definitely interpreting it as like the rock program where you would put them outside. So, this is good. Uh, I guess the best thing to do is if you're interested in it, go to Facebook. Uh, if you go to Stitch Mania... I believe at the top of the page there is a recommended group and it's the heart drop group. Probably the smartest thing for any of us who want to get involved with it to do is to go there and talk to people and find out what people are doing and decide if it's something we want to take part in. If it is not something that you want to take part in, I suggest that we simply leave the group and not be rude about it. Okay, bye. I know backstitching makes all the difference, but backstitching is... <laughs> I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, I think I have expended all the energy I am willing to expend on the lattice. So probably after lunch, I will finish up that backstitching and maybe move over here and try one of those time-lapse thing thingy things. Actually, what you're, you've probably already seen the time lapse because I recorded a whole chunk of Stitch With Me about the heart drops thing. Didn't know what the hell I was talking about. Didn't make a whole lot of sense once I learned what I was talking about. So I think rather than just cut it out, I'm just going to speed it up. You can watch some fun stitching. It'll all work out in the end. Either way, we'll meet back here. Bye, guys.
That's in the wrong spot. Son of a... I don't know if I'm done for the day, but I'm done for now. I got all the back stitching done over here. And did a little more of the lattice. I did the crown and the hearts and the little flowers over on the side. Well, most of them. I managed to do a... Maybe a stitch along. If I did, it probably preceded this clip. If not, it's going to be a time lapse. Also did a time lapse for the crown because I think the variegated floss looks cool when it builds up. So that will probably be maybe at the end, maybe in the middle. I don't know. I have to get ready. I haven't actually put real clothes on yet today, and I have to go to Dad's for dinner. So I will check back in later. Bye, guys. It is Wednesday night. Dinner has been had. Wine was had, but not so much that I can't work on the little witchy. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know if I feel like doing her hair tonight. I guess we'll find out. Talk to you in a few. Her hair is so cute. Oh, what is with the color? This one piece just loses its mind when I try to... Whatever. I can't stitch on a diagonal anymore. It's just making me crazy. Um, I picked out at least twice when I don't think I had to. I gotta move on. So, I think I'm done for the night. This was a big stitchy day. My hands are killing me. Tomorrow's Thursday. I'm going out Thursday night, so don't know if I'll be doing anything then, but Friday night, I'll be back at it. Talk to you then. There's a witchy for stitching. There's Vana on my screen. It's 9.30. I still got a couple of good stitching hours. Let's see if I can't get the big bow tie and the rest of her hair done. I don't want to stitch on a diagonal any longer than I have to. That is not easy. Oh, but it looks so cute. All right, I'll check in later. I did it. I finished her hair. Just so cute. <sighs> so it's February 1st, which means the stitch along has moved on from pumpkins. Her pumpkin goes there. Do I finish this or move on to the next theme, which I think is ghosts? <sighs> I feel like if I put her away, I won't take her back out. So I think we have to just commit to finishing the witchy and have something with a ghost ready to go. Now I need to go find something with a ghost. I think I can manage that. Talk to you later. A very simple goal for the night. I want to do the pumpkin. Got another round of variegated threads. Let's see how this comes out. We'll check in later. All right, real life. I just had to take my neighbor to uh, the emergency room. The poor thing has had pneumonia for two months. I swear to God, she weighs 80 pounds soaking wet. She was in bad shape, so we got her there. I don't know if you can hear the dogs. She's got two small dogs, but one of them is a biter. Already bit me once. Not going back over there. But they have an outdoor cat. And we're trying to get the cat in the house because it's cold out here. And my neighbor's husband won't be home for a couple of hours. So we don't want her out roaming around. So Mark's over there. I hope he's okay. Be a good neighbor, people. Take care of your neighbors. It's a scary time out here. It's a scary time when people can't call an ambulance because of the money. That's just wrong. All right. I hope he comes out soon. Okay, the pumpkin looks a little psychotic. He's tough to see on the uh, the orange fabric, but when the 
Darker colors fill in around him. He will pop a little more, but yeah, he looks psychotic. Um, I'm not against that. I'm just saying. I think I'm done for the night. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm exhausted. My leg hurts. I got bit by a dog. Oh my god, who does this happen to? I tried to do a good deed. I got hit, bit by a dog. Um, I'm going to go to bed. I will talk to you guys later.